Seekers, I'm Nick. X570 and Ryzen 3000 is finally here, and you guys have been asking us to check out this board for weeks. We've finally gotten our hands on the most overkill X570 board on the market. With that said, I'm extremely excited to show you guys another X570 board from Gigabyte. In this video, we're checking out the X570 Aorus Extreme, and it supports the Ryzen 2000 and 3000 CPUs. Let's finally check it out. Just before we start this video, I want to make it super clear that our motherboard videos are not reviews. They're just overviews, so you can get an idea of the feature set with these new boards and what physically comes in the box when you buy a brand new motherboard. We are not doing VRM analysis or board teardowns or anything like that. There's plenty of other channels on YouTube that do all of that kind of stuff, so don't ask why we don't do them because, yeah, we're just not one of those channels. Okay. Let's check out the X570 Aorus Extreme. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you requested it. Now we've got it, the X570 Aorus Extreme. Okay, let's get the board out of the way so we can see what's in the box, first of all. Okay, first thing we've got is this sheet of stickers. Uh, basically, it's a lot of Aorus logos on stickers. You can stick onto things. Okay, moving along, let's get this box out of here and just see what's inside of it. You can obviously see there's two boxes, but let's see what's in the first box. Now we've got some Thermal probes, these will uh, help you for your overclocking so you can see what the temperatures are in certain parts of your case. You've got this multilingual insulation guide. Now this is good if you're uh, doing things as simple as installing the CPU or RAM. It just basically shows you how to do the really basic stuff. Then you've got the user manual. The user manual is really helpful because it will tell you what everything is on the board, where everything is on the board and all of that other stuff. Now let's take a look at all the things that actually come with this motherboard. We have some Velcro straps for cable management. This is pretty standard with the high-end Aorus boards. We've also got some some M.2 screws and some M.2 standoffs for the three M.2 slots on this motherboard, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. There's also a whole bunch of these cables. There's actually two. I only showed one in this shot, but there's two addressable RGB to Corsair lighting connectors, which is quite nice. I think uh, more motherboard manufacturers should include this. It'll make life a lot easier with that Corsair stuff if you've got it. There's also a 12 volt non-addressable RGB extension cable. This is good for uh, other types of RGB stuff that you might have, like some light strips and all the other older stuff. There's also this little speaker that plugs into the motherboard for diagnostics. It's a really, really small speaker. It's kind of cute, if I'm honest. Okay, let's move along here. The next thing we've got are six paracord braided SATA cables. These are some of the best looking SATA cables I've ever seen come in a motherboard from factory. They're very, very nice. This is for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. They've also included that Gigabyte G connector. They've, they started including this in basically all their motherboards now. Basically the purpose of it is to connect up all your front panel wiring and just plug it straight in without having to figure out what each thing is on the motherboard itself. There's also this Aorus badge in case you're an extreme gamer. It helps with FPS and it stops the lag when you're playing in an MLG esports tournament. I keep making these more ridiculous every time I see them. <laughs> okay, the next thing we've got is something that I've been requesting for the longest time, and actually they did this with the Z390 Water Force as well. A USB stick with all of the drivers on it. Hallelujah, Aorus. Thank you for doing this. No more optical discs, please. Okay, next up we've got two Wi-Fi 6 antennas. Now this is for the Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5 that is built into this motherboard. Yes, there's two of them with this motherboard. Now this I found quite interesting. This is a breakout cable that plugs into the motherboard for all the front panel wiring. Something that I didn't know that this motherboard actually had until I had to play with it a little bit later down the line, but very, very nice for cable management purposes. Let's take a look at the other box, the Aorus RGB Fan Commander. This is, uh, is basically for RGB and fans and all that stuff for your high-end Aorus boards. This comes with the Z390 Aorus Extreme and the water force as well. We have covered this in depth as well. If you're interested in seeing more about this, you can check out the link in the top right hand corner right about now. Let's just actually take a quick look at some of the wiring and stuff with it as well. So it's got all of the, the fan and lighting wiring you could possibly ever imagine for 
just a lot of fans basically. There's some USB header connectors and some RGB connectors that also come with it to plug into some headers on the motherboard. There's a power connector for the controller itself. There's some more USB stuff, some cable management goodies, some more thermal probes. There's a lot of stuff with this kit, but yeah, we did a video closer looking at that. So let's uh, move right along and take a closer look at the board itself. Let's get it out so we can dive right in. Okay, underneath this little access panel, we have an audio connector, we have a TPM connector, and additional power for the PCIe slots with a six pin PCIe power connector. Next up, we've got two USB 3.0 headers. There's one USB 2.0 header. There's six SATA connectors. There's one addressable RGB connector a bit further along. There's one analog RGB connector. Now, there's the connector for the breakout cable for the front panel stuff that we showed a little bit earlier. There's a 24 pin power connector and there is five PWM fan connectors. And everything is along this right hand edge of the board. For cable management, this is going to be really, really, really interesting. I think it's going to be really nice too. There's also a diagnostic LED screen and a USB Type-C header right here, just behind the addressable RGB connectors. Speaking of addressable RGB, there is another addressable RGB connector, a 12 volt analog RGB connector, a CPU fan header, and an AIO slash CPU optional header. There's two 8-pin EPS power connectors, as well as another PWM fan connector. This board seriously has a lot of connectivity. Okay, let's take a bit of a closer look at the PCIe slots themselves. There's a 16x slot at the top, an 8x slot, and a 4x slot at the bottom. These are all PCIe Gen 4, because obviously this is X570. All right, let's flip the board over and take a bit of a look at the back side. There is that protective plate on the back which also works as a heatsink. One of the reasons why this motherboard doesn't have active cooling on the PCH is because of this. Very, very nice. There's also a power and reset button on the top of the board which is quite nice if you're doing things like bench testing or LN2. Everything is very easily accessible. Now this wouldn't be a motherboard video if we didn't talk about this in 2019. It's got a 16 direct phase VRM and, and the cooling solution is absolutely crazy. This is easily the most overkill X570 board on the market right about now. Just like every other AM4 board on the market, this has a standard AM4 socket with standard AM4 cooler mounting. As I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video, it has three M.2 slots, all Gen 4 slots. Just pulling off this heatsink, there's a few screws that hold it down, so I thought I wanted to show you what it would look like underneath. There's also a top slot, which does the same thing, and in this shot here, you can see all three M.2 slots. Another thing I wanted to mention about this board is this is one of the only X570 boards on the market to not have active chipset cooling. Everything is handled by the giant heat sinks on top of this board. It's very, very impressive. The X570 Aorus Extreme has four DDR4 RAM slots, which support overclocked memory up to 4400 megahertz. There's an included IO shield on the back of the motherboard with a clear CMOS button, a Q flash button, a bunch of USB ports, antenna connectors for the Wi-Fi 6, there's some USB 3.1, there's a BIOS flashback USB port, there's gigabit ethernet, there's 10 gigabit ethernet as well, there's USB Type-C and 7.1 audio. All around, this is a very, very impressive motherboard.
If you're interested in grabbing the X570 or its extreme, they're going for around, wait for it, you guys ready for this? 1,200 Australian dollars or around 700 US dollars at the time of filming. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You pick, we seek, and 1,200 Australian dollars for a motherboard. Wow, that's a lot of money. Thanks for watching.